Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel, thank you for being here. Today, we will have what I believe to be a short video, one that will tie together a handful of different topics. But let us start with this, the Rock of Gibraltar, Jabil al-Tariq. I've often heard this landmass discussed, especially in a biblical sense, however, I never really understood the vast history of this huge rock of limestone and the significance it has played throughout history. Furthermore, over the last few weeks, I've been diving into the more esoteric histories of some well-established islands and coastlines, mysterious features on the Earth's surface, specifically fortified locations like the Rock of Gibraltar. From here, I found but I've yet to fully discuss with you an assortment of really unique looking fortifications, some of which are situated seemingly inside of these giant rocks lying next to the ocean. The Rock of Gibraltar, oddly, is no different. As we begin to view these images and discuss the history, You'll notice the Moorish castle, literally one of the oldest and most profound of all castles found on earth. This castle, seemingly being one of the few earliest to have identifiable foundations that survived up until modern times. A set of fortifications running within the rock like veins. These fortifications also helped establish the Moorish architectural style as one of the most formidable in all of the world. We will look through these images of the castle at the Rock of Gibraltar, and we will also look at other outstanding features that I was able to find. I've tried to include both the oldest known photographs as well as modern photographs to allow you to compare and contrast. Diving into the currently accepted history, per usual which is full of historical characters, names, and lists, which are important but may confuse those who are unfamiliar, I will try to keep this narrative as concise as possible. We're told the Rock of Gibraltar is a naturally occurring limestone promontory. It stands over 426 meters or nearly 1400 feet tall. The highest peak, which is now preserved, is off limits to nearly all visitors, while the base of the rock attracts millions of visitors per year. The Rock of Gibraltar has a wide labyrinth of interconnected tunnels, underground passageways, and previously established grand living quarters, all hidden away beneath the rock. The Rock of Gibraltar sits on the southern tip of the Iberian Peninsula, and yet it is, and has been, for hundreds of years, a British-owned and occupied territory. From ancient times, the Rock of Gibraltar was well known, being one of the pillars of Hercules. The Pillars of Hercules, by some accounts, are the pillars which a giant Hercules straddled to protect the ancient world. Others claim the pillars being two large rocks once housed actual massive pillars, which marked the lengths which Hercules traveled on his journey, essentially marking the ends of the known world at that time. Still, others, including Pindar, in writing that was quoted by Strabo, say that Hercules, the entire legend of, came to the Etruscans first from the Phoenicians, with Hercules being an Etruscan creation that actually represents the Phoenician god Melkart, also known as Melikarthus. Melkart, amongst other things, was considered to be the son of the creator deity, known as Bael, or El, in the Phoenician or Punic religion. Melkart was ruler of the underworld, protector of the universe, in charge of protecting the seasons, ensuring that cyclical nature of time continues. Thus, Melkart was both the god of the passage of time, but also of growth and death. Melkart was the patriot god of Tyre, even well into Roman times. Now, the other pillar of Hercules, which is not considered to be the rock of Gibraltar, is unknown, but considered to be either Monte Hacho in Queta or Jebel Musa in Morocco. Imagine, for even a second, that a giant pillar truly did stand in each one of these locations, or a giant archway could have been built crossing the seas. How miraculous, how amazing would that have been to visualize in the ancient world? In the current narrative about the Rock of Gibraltar, we're told roughly 5 million years ago, parts of the Eurasian plate collided with the African Teutonic plate, creating what is deemed to be a massive series of folds, or raised land masses, ripples of a gigantic nature. According to this narrative, this collision created the lake of the Mediterranean, which eventually dried out and killed thousands of different species. Eventually, 
the Atlantic Ocean broke through what is today the Strait of Gibraltar, flooding the dry Mediterranean Lake and creating the Mediterranean Sea, which now surrounds the rock today. As the Rock of Gibraltar formed and aged and the water contacted it, it contained, and still does, heavy pockets of calcite. Calcite is a key component of limestone, and calcite slowly dissolves when in contact with water. And thus, calcite pockets are said to have created over 100 naturally occurring caves within the Rock of Gibraltar. Again, question everything. Eventually, these caves were attached and occupied and utilized by human means. Shocking when you consider that the first ever identified Neanderthal or older skull in the world was apparently found at the base of the Rock of Gibraltar while exploration and excavating was being done inside of the cave ruins. This skull, known as the Gibraltar skull, or simply Gibraltar No. 1, discovered on March the 3rd, 1848, deep in the Forbes Quarry on the Rock of Gibraltar, actually predates the Neanderthal by hundreds if not thousands of years. However, at the time of its discovery, 1848, not even an entire Neanderthal skull had ever been found before. The whole idea even of a Neanderthal or the understanding and categorizing of artifacts to a Neanderthal time period had not occurred yet. This discovery was the first of its kind. Basically, what I'm saying is essentially when this Gibraltar skull was discovered, it was simply labeled as man's ancestor, a giant who lived before the flood. It took many more decades before true science would be applied to this discovery and the discovery of other giant and ancient human bones worldwide. For many decades, historians and scientists alike, with the help of organizations like the Smithsonian, would collect these bones and use these discoveries to meticulously, some would say nefariously, rewrite the history. In the case of Gibraltar No. 1, found deep in this quarry on the Rock of Gibraltar, we have an entire intact skull that predates Neanderthals, being disclosed to the public years before even any Neanderthal artifacts are ever displayed. And at the same time, this Gibraltar 1 skull was basically believed to be a person who lived before the flood in the time of the Bible, in the time of Noah. Imagine what that did in 1848 to the reputation of the Rock of Gibraltar. Sure, this rock was world famous, especially in ancient times, because of the Hercules myth and being the so-called edge of the traveled world. But as time passed, as centuries passed, as certain nefarious groups tried to take over the rock and to rewrite the history, we have it really going unrecognized for the importance of its history until this big discovery in 1848. Then, from this time forward, we have a renewed interest. We have new minds, the whole world really, putting eyes not only directly on the Rock of Gibraltar, but also onto the history of mankind. I have numerous other videos about discoveries that were made around the world from the early 1800s through roughly 1860. Flourishing worldwide was this idea of opening ancient burial mounds. Now, these burial mounds or these burial chambers were called different things in different cultures worldwide, but all of them essentially contained countless relics of the ancient past, but beyond that, they contained bones that exceeded modern man. Skeletal remains which identified that our previous ancestors, much like the warriors of the myths and legends, were in fact much larger and more physically robust, more physically gifted than we were back then and we are today. These findings not only shook up the mainstream opinion, even if they couldn't always be verified by science, but they also seemed to allow the true manufacturers of the history to rewrite the history how they felt. I believe, for the most part, we received the short end of the stick in this portion of history. We weren't fully disclosed to what was actually going on in the even recent past. But diving back into the Rock of Gibraltar, that's where we get to many more questions. One, this is said to be a defensive rock. Now, how exactly is that possible? We're told there are cannons 
built into the rock, appearing as, from a distance, just a natural formation. And yet, they were dug and entrenched inside the rock. The same with tunnels that were built not only to walk and traverse, but to actually live in. And they were filled in throughout this entire rock of Gibraltar with cannons and other artillery. And it was mounted and used to defend the rock from oncoming ships, oncoming armies for centuries. Now, the history of the Moorish castle is convoluted at best, but beginning there, we're told the Moorish conquest of Spain was led by Tariq Abin Zayed, who is said to have first landed in Europe on the rock of Gibraltar, making it culturally significant to the Moorish cause. It is written that the Moors conquered the island, including the vast ancient ruins and tunnel system, roughly around the year 711 AD. And from here, they began almost immediately constructing a series of vast fortifications both above and below ground that encompassed the greater parts of the raised elevation of the rock. No exact completion date is given for the Moorish castle on the rock, however, the castle housed Moorish rule in Europe for centuries. Even when the Spanish reclaimed greater parts of what is today Spain, the Rock of Gibraltar remained Moorish controlled and was key in communications between the Moors of the African coast and the Emirate of Granada. Most of what remains of the Moorish castle that isn't buried or off limits is the Tower of Homage and its surrounding fortifications. However, the Moorish castle itself embodies nearly all the fortified walls, both buried and visible, on the entire rock. At one time, the castle was one of, if not the most important castle in the Moorish Empire in Europe, and its overwhelming size and location are said to have been fitting of such a title. The underground tunnels became known as the Galleries, or the Great Siege Tunnel of Gibraltar. We are told the siege tunnels utilizing both naturally occurring caves as well as man-made labor were said to have been dug, excavated, or founded in the year 1779. This occurred during the Great Siege of Gibraltar, when Henry Insay of the Royal Engineers hatched a plan to interconnect the ancient tunnels within the easily carved limestone, and thus to connect some of the tunnels to the outer wall of the rock, allowing the British to fire at approaching ships almost mysteriously from hidden inside the rock itself. This utilized the ancient caves and limestone pockets of decay, as well as the caves that were founded beneath the Moorish castle. Over 1,000 feet of new cave was dug, and today, large portions of the cave, the parts from 1779, can be visited by the public and are known as the Galleries of Gibraltar. Skip ahead in history, as this narrative does, and it suggests that Britain peacefully owned the Rock of Gibraltar and its fortifications and museums alike until the outbreak of World War II. Then, at that time, the population of the Rock of Gibraltar was evacuated, and over 30,000 British troops were sent to occupy the tunnels beneath the rock. The rock became a British base for secret operations and further tunnels were dug and interconnected. An entire housing bunker was created so as if the Germans ever did overtake the rock of Gibraltar, the tens of thousands of British and other allied soldiers could be evacuated to inside the rock inside the bunker and live for a number of months undetected by the Germans above. So having that slew of new information out there and looking through these handfuls of images that I could find, many of the most mysterious images, those taken by the soldiers during and before World War II, seem to be very difficult for us to locate. If you yourself have any photographs of the Rock of Gibraltar from before the year 1900, I would love to see them. Essentially, this entire rock was built to be a defensive structure, even though many parts of the defense were naturally occurring. Many narratives point to the naturally occurring limestone and the naturally occurring caves and say that what we see today is an amalgamation of different armies throughout time utilizing these natural resources. But what if it is something more? What if it is something deeper? Again, the pillars of Hercules the ancient Etruscans, their first hero seemingly stemming from the true hero of the Phoenicians, who are very much related in my opinion to the first men that we call Tartars or Celtics. And then we have those who 
ruled over the area with a rune-like language, who wore Turks, who brought about farming and religion and language. And again, we read through the sagas of the Nordic people and the tales of the heroes and the tales of the Saka, the Sahai, the Most High, the kings of the ancient Asian plains. And we have this master of snakes or the master of animals, a deity that is revered in the oldest depictions that are found really all around the world. The same way we find the burial mounds, we find depictions of the master of animals. And this is what some would consider to be the first art, whether in Europe, Asia, or Africa. And it all seems to depict this same deity. We have evident proof that a first group of people arose and their knowledge became what would be considered to be all man's knowledge until it was eventually corrupted and in return used to create specific religions and pockets of society, thus creating the feudal system. But could this ancient rock of Gibraltar complete with ancient, seemingly biblical implications, could this rock actually stem from the time of the first men, the time before the Bible, and possibly be a bastion of the original first men's culture, hence the later attribution of this area to Hercules and to Melkart and to the master of time, to the master of animals, to the deities of the first men. Just a little food for thought in this dreary Monday evening. This video ran a little bit longer than expected, but I feel like we discussed a lot of fascinating information, so I'm content to share it with you. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions regarding the Rock of Gibraltar down below. And if you want to reach out to me, or you want to talk to me more personally, or you want to support the channel, you can do so at this link right here. Just paste this into your browser. I also still have about 11 Jared Boosters t-shirts I got custom made for the channel. So if you'd like one, please reach out to me and let me know. The history never stops making itself aware to me. So I'm planning to continue to make these videos for you as often as possible. Hopefully, we can keep learning together and I look forward to hearing what you have to say about the Rock of Gibraltar down below. Within the strength of this narrative, we have us, the backbone of this new research community, looking to answer all these unanswered questions from throughout history. We are strong like the Rock of Gibraltar. So anyway, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Look forward to hearing what you have to say down below. Cheers, everybody.